record our interview. We're recording now. And Pat, I'm going to spotlight you. <laughs> Whether you want to or not. No. <laughs> um, welcome, everyone. Um, thank you all for coming on early. And uh, as we get to know Pat Mays uh, this morning a little bit better. Um, uh, Pat, I know you've been a longtime member of 7th Street Christian Church. Um, yeah, when did you join? What's your history with 7th Street? Well, I moved to Richmond in 71, mm -hmm. and um, I've, I was in a disciples church. I grew up in a disciples church, so I was looking for another disciples church, so I visited different ones and really preferred 7th Street, so I joined 7th Street probably in 71. And I remember, you know, I was always in the choir from the time I was a little bitty kid. And so when I found out when the choir rehearsed, I didn't wait for them to ask me. I just showed up at choir practice one night. <laughs> so, but, and I've been in the choir ever since. That's right. That's, uh, you're such a go-getter like that. You're like, I'm just going to show up. Like, yeah, you don't wait. You just, I mean, who doesn't want more people in the church choir? So I'm sure that you were a welcomed uh, an addition. So and then in a solid alto. Um, yeah, I was telling Pam Funa, I was like, if Pat will let me sit next to her, I think I can get my alto ear back. Um, <laughs> so, well, that answers some questions. Where did you grow up? Where did you move from? Uh, Lynchburg. Uh, mm -hmm. I was born in Newport News, or as they, as the people down there call it, Newport News. Uh, but we moved, we moved to Lynchburg when I was four. So okay. I don't remember anything about Newport News, but anyway. Okay. Wow. Maybe. Um, and so you, um, okay. So you grew up disciples. That was one of my questions is how you came to be a part of the Christian church disciples of Christ, but you were just born into it. Was your family long like disciples yeah. as well? No, they weren't. Uh, I think my dad was Methodist. And my mother, they both grew up, well, dad in Amherst County and my mother in Greene County. And she went to a Christian church, but it wasn't a disciples Christian. It was just a little small country church. And then I think in Newport News, they went to a Methodist church. So I'm not sure how they found Newport, <laughs> but they did. So I was certainly glad. Yeah. So you've been, you've been a lifelong disciple then. That's great. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, disciples, uh, fa family disciples that like, kind of go back, like, yeah. you know, several generations. So it's yeah. always interesting. Like, uh, Judith Hopkins, who has been a disciple, like since Cane Ridge days, right? Like her family can trace it back to Cane Ridge, you know, how disciple are you? Um, for, for you, for you disciple of Christ newbies, uh, we'll, we'll explain later. Um, uh, but, uh, <laughs> so, uh, what kinds of things are you involved in? I know that you're, you're involved in the choir at church. Um, so I'm curious about not just church activities, but beyond the church activities. Okay. I sing with the one voice chorus. Mm -hmm. Of course, we haven't rehearsed in the last year. We missed our March concert last year and, you know, all of them since then. And I also sing with the Henrico Pops Chorus. Now we've been doing a little bit on Zoom. Of course, you're singing to yourself, but at least we're singing a little bit. So we did get a packet of music last week. So we're hoping that we can start rehearsing in September and have a December concert, but we'll see. And of course, I love to travel. Um, but haven't done much this past year. <laughs> In fact, we were down at um, uh, Christmount uh, last March, that weekend, the weekend that all this stuff was starting for these um, Southeastern regional uh, meeting with all the Southeastern states. And uh, we were on the way down there and we got a phone call saying, do you think we ought to cancel our retreat? We said, you know, we're halfway there, <laughs> we're coming. So then they said, maybe they ought to call the Florida people and tell them to turn around and go home. But they called them and they had already, they were already more than halfway there because they had spent the night before on the way. So they said, we're coming too. So we ended up with about 60 people. So it wasn't know. bad, but um, anyhow, a lot, of, a lot of things got canceled and 
we normally go to Pigeon Forge about three times a year. And mm -hmm. of course, none of that happened. So that's right. You're an avid traveler. You are always on the go. Um, yeah. yeah, I think and you're currently serving as treasurer of 7th Street Christian Church. And I have to wonder if that only works because of COVID and you're not traveling all the time. <laughs> but uh <laughs> Well, I'll try to get by the church at least once a week. No, you do. I see, somehow, so for those of you um, who are just now getting to know Pat, Pat will be some on, on some crazy trip, like she'll, you know, on a cruise somewhere, you think she's gone. And then like the next morning, she just shows up at the church and you're like, Pat, I thought you were in Alaska. And she's like, yeah, I got back at three o'clock this morning. <laughs> Uh, and I had to come and do X, Y, Z. Like it's, you're the energizer bunny um, is your nickname around the church. So I apologize. I kind of lost focus because the um, Hogan, you might not want to hear this part. Um, uh, the cat Jenny likes um, to sit. She likes open windows. And so uh, anyway, the screen on the upstairs window just fell on, on the, the porch. <laughs> And I was like, oh God, did Jenny just fall out of the window? She did it. She's fine. She's fine. Oh, wow. um, sorry, Hogan. You probably didn't want to know that, but okay. So uh, I, uh, a few other questions that I have, tell me about um, your affection for puzzles or at least during oh. COVID. Um, I do want to celebrate this. I want to acknowledge and celebrate this. So go. Well, before COVID, I never worked puzzles at home. We would, when we went on trips, a lot of times we would work, uh, work puzzles, but um, never did them at home. And I don't know why I just thought, well, maybe I'll start working puzzles. So I've been working puzzles all year. <laughs> and you have so far completed 54 puzzles. I think so. Yep. And a, a couple of months ago, when it looked like you were getting close to 52, <laughs> I, I invited you into a challenge of completing yeah. 52 puzzles in 52 weeks yeah. and you completed 53 puzzles in 52 weeks yeah. so yeah. I just want to acknowledge that like that's pretty impressive like that I th think I have a picture of almost all of them some yeah. of them are a little blurry but yeah. uh but I think I have a picture of gave the challenge as uh, didn't do any more thousand piece ones because I wasn't sure if I could make the challenge. So I was doing 500, mostly 500. But That's did still one that was 130, I think, with the round one. But um, that's anyway. still honorable. That's still pretty. That's still pretty amazing. Yeah. To yeah, most of them were 500. Then the next one I did, the last one I did was a thousand pieces. So yeah. Yeah. Well, Pat, that's good because I have a problem putting pieces of puzzle together that only require two. So <laughs> the fact that you can do anything more than that is very admirable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just imagine Paul like putting together those two. Oh, no, puzzles. no. <laughs> I'll get the corners and that's about as far as I go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, hey, Holly. Yeah. Our next church social could be thousand piece puzzle four versus Pam eight Pam. versus Pam and or Pam Pat. would still reign supreme. You mean Pat? Yeah, yeah. I mean Pat. Pat. I mean yeah. Pat. <laughs> That's actually that could be a fun when we can come back together. That might be fun in the narthex, like to have yeah. a puzzle that people can come and kind of work on at their own leisure. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. I mean these. These things, these traditions that have become a part of our life during COVID, um, you know, working puzzles, asking Janet every Sunday morning, what's for breakfast, which we'll get to. Don't tell us yet, Janet. Um, uh, you know, how do we carry these things forward uh, in a post-COVID world? So I'm curious, Pat, like, what are you, I'm sure you are looking forward to singing um, yes. after COVID, but I'm curious, like, what's that? you are an avid traveler. Like what is that trip you're really looking forward to um, when we can get back together? Oh, I don't know. You know, Judy and I had a trip planned to the Northern countries like the Netherlands mm -hmm. and Russia, which we had to cancel. So maybe we'll try to do that one again. But, um, and I'm looking forward to going back to Pigeon Forge too. You know, we, 
we went for the they in um, the spring every year at Dollywood. They they bring in entertainers from all over the world, mm -hmm. and they really have some good entertainers. And then in October we would go back for the Southern Gospel music, and then we always enjoy the Christmas shows in November or December. So anyway, my season ticket kind of. <laughs> well, they did extend them to till July, but I don't know if we'll get down there before July even. Yeah. Well, yeah. Is it, are they open? Is is uh... they are open, um, oh. and I'm not sure how they're seating people, but in right. in their indoor theaters. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. That's and exciting. My, my friend that I go down there with, they're all in. Well, they're 88, 89, and ninety years old. So. They, they have to be pretty careful, but I think they've all gotten their vaccine, so. Um, that's, that's a, yeah, yeah, you've, um, it'll just be interesting how people's comfort level um, is as we, as we move out of this time of COVID and mm -hmm. uh, back into something more normal. Yeah. Um, so we just have to continue to be safe. Um, does, does anyone in, um, on Zoom, have uh, questions for Pat, feel free to ask them or when did you start doing different colors in your hair? What started that? <laughs> yes, Pat, what started that? You know, some of my friends don't like it, but the lady who cuts my hair is the one who suggested the, the spiky thing. And, and she probably suggested the color too. And her mother-in-law is a real good friend of mine. And she asked her one day, she said, why don't you try to talk Pat out of that hair? <laughs> <laughs> she's the one that suggested she said you can wear it some people can't but you can <laughs> but it's been fun it is I thought the inspiration was me oh my gosh all this time I thought <laughs> I was the one that inspired the hair color darn it <laughs> it's, it's been fun and I get so many compliments on it it's yeah amazing. no so. it, it is fun and you um you'll sometimes well are you gonna go green this week for uh Last year you did. I'm just wondering, you know. I should. I haven't gotten any green yet, but I should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, just yeah. so you know, uh, food coloring and moose works. Oh, food coloring and moose. Yeah. When Frank and I were dating, he, he called me up. He said, it's St. Patrick's Day. I'm going to be there in half an hour and wear something green. And I couldn't find anything green, so I dyed my hair green. <laughs> That's oh, he looked at me and he goes, that works. Get in the car. <laughs> I can hear him say that. Yeah. Um, another question that came was, what is your favorite past trip, Pat? Oh, goodness. Um, probably Hawaii. Oh, yeah. The last time we went to Hawaii, we stayed five weeks and it was wonderful. We did. We were into timeshare uh, at that time. And Betty and I went to Molokai for the first week. And then the next three weeks we were on Kauai and her nephew and his wife came over and stayed about 10 days. And then they left and her two sisters came over and stayed about 10 days. And then the last week we were on Maui, just the two of us, so. And that is amazing. I can't, I've never been to Hawaii and I'd love to go, but I can't imagine going for five weeks. And oh Molokai, my God. Molokai. Molokai is not, it's not a real busy island, but it's beautiful. And the first night we were there, we found out there was a, a club kind of place just down the roadways that had uh, the older people, the seniors doing music and hula and all that kind of stuff. So we thought, well, that'll be fun. So we went and we each ordered a Mai Tai, which was about this big. <laughs> It was so good. We ordered a second one, which we should not have done. As we, <laughs> when, when the show was over, I said, Betty, I'm not sure I should drive. She said, well, I can't drive. <laughs> so, but fortunately, I don't know why we didn't think about staying there and getting something to eat because we hadn't had dinner. But we got back okay. And, and there's not much traffic on Molokai, so we got back fine. But wow. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, Pat, on that note, thank you so much. Um, we can continue to share stories, um, but uh, thank you so much for 
sharing today and letting us get to know you a little bit better. Um, we just like to create a little bit of space um, for people to grab whatever elements they need. Um, I have made some fresh bread for communion and my uh, the alarm's going off, so I need to go get that. Um, but uh, thank you again. And uh, oops, wrong, wrong one. Um,